Hello, Milan Mahadevan from 8451 here. Welcome to the special edition of The Upload. Today, we're going to explore a non-business related topic and discuss some of the other elements that make our DNA unique. This special edition episode will give you a sneak peek into the ethos of our organization and answer some of the listener questions we've received. So sit back, relax, and if you're so inclined, drop us a line and let us know what you think. Welcome to this special edition of The Upload. I'm your host, Dan O'Keefe. Today, we're talking to Jennifer Conweiler and Ryan Showalter. Welcome to The Upload, guys. Oh, thrilled to be Thank here. Thank you. Glad you both could join us. Great for you guys to be here. Before we begin, it's important to note, as we have on the last few episodes, that this is another virtual episode of The Upload. We're continuing to take the proper precautions and are meeting today with the help of modern technology to keep everyone safe and healthy. Speaking of which, how are both of you doing? We're doing well. I'm doing well. Thank you. Good, you good. Ryan? <laughs> I shouldn't speak good. for Ryan. <laughs> yeah. I'm doing great. Great. Families are doing well. That's fantastic. Well, by way of introduction, our guest today is Jennifer Conweiler, author of the new book, Creating Introvert-Friendly Workplaces. Also joining us is Ryan Showalter, Director of Consulting for 8451 and founder of the Associate Resource Group, Itopia. So uh, just for you folks out there viewing and listening, Itopia is spelled all caps, I-T-O-P, lowercase i, uh, capital A. And we'll get into what Itopia is in just a few minutes. But first, Jennifer, as the author of several books on the topic, I think it would be helpful to start today by having you explain exactly what introversion is. I think we all had an idea or have an idea but tell us what it is and what it isn't. Right, Dan. Uh, thanks for, for having me again, So uh, and, and Ryan as well. Yeah, introversion really is, uh, introverts get their energy by going within. And uh, they get quiet and they're alone and that's how they get energized to go out into the world again. And they can get very drained by social mm-hmm. interaction. Whereas you think about extroverts, get stimulated by social and people interaction. Um, it's kind of like a battery, you know, what drains your battery? Uh, it's not like introverts don't like people when you said that some of the, maybe the misconception um, and introversion doesn't, isn't the same as shy, which can be really be related right. to more of a so- social or psychological uh, problem. So it's not a problem. It's just how you're wired. And what we know now, Dan, is that probably between 40 and 60% of the population is actually introverted. So pretty even split there between introverts. It really is. Okay. It really is. People are very surprised by that. Great. And so, yeah. Jennifer, do you consider yourself, and Ryan, do you consider yourself an introvert? Oh, I'll, I'll answer first because I am an extrovert, and extroverts tend to jump in first, <laughs> right, Ryan? Right. Right. Sure. That's right. That's right. <laughs> well, you did say my name first. And I did, that. absolutely. Uh, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm an extrovert, and I consider myself an advocate and an ally for introverts. Yep, and I would I would definitely say I'm an introvert. Um, I think I think Jennifer brought up a point though. Uh, it's about being wired. So mm-hmm. what that means is that it's it's really part of our personality. Um, and, and we'll get into this, I'm sure, but it's not something I can necessarily change. It is, right. who I am. and uh, you know, there's there's lots of discussion that we can have as we go forward. But uh, I just wanted to call that out. Well, it's not something, something that, you necessarily want to change. I'm sorry, you definitely don't want want to change it, and that's really the focus of where introversion has come now, Dan. We yeah, and that's why I was going to ask yeah, the same question. Sure, is sure. You want to change, or is it something? Well, maybe that's a, 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 a another question. Maybe not one we had planned for, but is introversion something that most introverts want to change or would like to change about themselves? Is there a stigma in that fashion, um, or have introverts, you know? become comfortable with their, their position as introverts? Uh, I would definitely say uh, it's evolving. Um, mm-hmm. I, I would say, you know, if we want to say five, 10 years ago, okay, um, you would probably get a lot of people, a lot of introverts would say, if I could change this, I would. Right. Um, which if you think about that is really kind of telling uh, in terms of what they thought and what society or their job, their friends, et cetera, were kind of reinforcing was that there was somehow a negative stigmatism to it because you're mm-hmm. not so you're not this, you're not that, whatever. Um, but I, I do feel like that's 
that's been changing here slowly, uh, recognizing the power of introversion, uh, creating um, value from introversion, those types of things have started to take off. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm hopeful that it's changing. I'm hopeful that Itopia is part of that. Uh, Jennifer's books are part of that. Uh, so there, there, there seems to be a movement, if you will. Yes, yeah, so movements great. take time too, right? They take time. And, and to Ryan's point, you know, it starts very early. Uh, little children are socialized, you know, to not be alone, not play alone. You always have to be with groups. And so it starts, you know, we get programmed. People get programmed very early, hmm. uh, Dan. But, you know, we and we still see bias. I mean, in companies, uh, just one quick example, um, I was involved with a Fortune 50 company last year, and we were creating a new module for training on introverted leadership. Right. And we thought we had the support of the executive sponsor. And at the very last minute, he, he interestingly enough, was a very strong introvert. Mm -hmm. He decided he didn't want introvert in the title of the huh. program. He just wanted to kind of water it down and say personality difference. Does that sound familiar, Ryan? Yeah, because yep. he thought there was, you know, it wouldn't be acceptable. And that's, you know, and when you get that coming from a senior leader, not certainly, that's why I was so happy to, to come across uh, and be connected with Ryan at um, 8451 because it's like they're on the, you guys are on the opposite side of the spectrum of, of that uh, acceptance and beginning to talk about it. Yeah. But yeah, Jennifer, I would fully, there, there, there are um, stereotypes, assumptions tied to that label. It, it's kind of a, a blessing and a curse because mm -hmm. we, we can label it, which is really powerful. Um, but when, when you do that, there are stereotypes, assumptions that come with it. So I understand why he was a little reluctant to maybe not highlight that fact. Yes. Yes. Let's jump to. Right. Certain things about introversion, um, just by saying I'm an introvert, creates some of those kind of stereotypes jump off the page, if you will. Well, and, and Ryan, um, interesting that you, you're, you're addressing that because you, it led you to create Itopia, correct? Yep. So, correct. so tell us, what is Itopia and what made you want to create it? Yeah, so uh, Itopia, I, we should start with the name and Dan, thanks for, you know, calling out the how we, how we uh, branded, but um, it, it was really a, a smash up of introversion and utopia. So the idea was, how do we create an environment um, where the individual, so the individual introverts um, can succeed? And how do we create an environment at 8451 and in business um, that supports that? So mm -hmm. it's really, that was really kind of the idea behind uh, Itopia. Uh, and it really started from that, that small little view of like, if we can just help one more, one person realize the power, uh, figure out how they can showcase the power of introversion. Um, and how can we maybe tweak 8451 or the culture or the company to uh, really accommodate and unlock, um, unlock the potential for introverts, we could, we kind of stumbled upon something that could be really powerful, but it, but it, the idea really started with one person. So one person, uh, I was in a meeting, uh, mm -hmm. got up and spoke and just said how proud they were just speak in front of a group of people. And I could just relate to that. And so the idea was really like, how can I help him? That one person, uh, you know, maybe explore different things, different avenues, techniques, tricks, whatever you want to say for these situations where you're a little bit more uncomfortable or it's outside the norm for introversions is really how it sparked. And it was just, how do we help more people? How, how can the business create an environment where people feel like not only that they're included because mm -hmm. you're in meetings, et cetera, you know, you're part of the team. But how, how do you create this sense of belonging um, and that you're valued and that your contributions are valued and they come out in a way that's really authentic, not making it seem like you have to be something you're not. Right. Like we talked about this is how, the, we're um, how do we how, how do we do that in a meaningful way? And that, that's really what Itopia has been trying to focus on. So there's a, really a huge element of inclusion here, Ryan, that, that, that we're trying to address. Right. That's right. That's right. And, 
And so, Jennifer, tell us from your learnings, what are some of the challenges that introverts face in the workplace um, akin to uh, what Ryan has shared, but, but even beyond that, and not just with 8451, but in, in general? In general, in yeah. And, and I've really studied it, Dan, around the world. Uh, and I will, I will say that Ryan is a really great example of a change agent, mm -hmm. which I, my latest work I found, you know, how do we take the conversation further and actually make change in companies? And it's one person at a time, no matter what level, bringing that up and getting together right. and talking about this. So I, I want to highlight Ryan uh, to, to say that. So some of the challenges that um, I come across and, and are, are constantly mentioned by uh, introverts, one is people exhaust. And so people are not necessarily particularly extroverts aware that when they interrupt, for instance, multiple times a day, that takes its toll on introverts, not, not giving them the space to be quiet. When, when um, they're interrupted or? When they interrupt. When um, they interrupt. Okay. When they interrupt. And one of the cool things now is introverts, <laughs> extroverts being home, you know, and not yeah. having that office kind of banter, they're starting to tell me that they're starting to appreciate more of that quiet time. So I'm hopeful that that might make a difference. Um, another, another challenge that introverts have um, is negative impressions related to what we were saying earlier. Um, mm -hmm. There's a lot of misconceptions that come up um, uh, come across when, let's say, an introvert, uh, introverted person is in a meeting, and let's say particularly on a virtual Zoom call that has you know a number of people on it, mm -hmm. uh, and they're not speaking up. Uh, they are oftentimes the bias of, of other folks who are more willing to step in the room or it's easier for them um, will uh, say that that person is slow, you know, or they don't have anything to contribute when in fact their ideas may be the thing that turns the project around. Right. And so having that awareness is, is really key that that's an issue. And the, related to that, the third one I'll say that comes up a lot is pressure to self-promote. That introverts feel that they need to... Um, they need to talk about their accomplishments and their results. And one of their strengths really is humility, you right. know, and being calm, right? And so that kind of goes against that. Like, this is part of my job. Why do I need right. to brag, brag about it? As we say here in the South, don't brag about yourself in Atlanta. <laughs> well, so Jennifer, I, I was going to ask yeah. you actually, let, yeah. let's, let's talk about those, those situations where you're on a video, whether it's a video conference call like mm -hmm. this, a Zoom call, or maybe it's just a, 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 um, a, um, a conference call, no video. Right. Uh, and we've talked about this at 8451. What, what, um, actually let's talk about it. If it's just a call, uh, let's say there are five people in a room and there's one person on, on, on the phone working from somewhere remote. Um, and you know, you're not, uh, if, if you're not hearing from them, maybe they, they are an introvert. Um, we've talked about that's an element of there. That's a form of inclusion, right? Yes. Or to, We're not including, <laughs> right. not including, you know, asking right. that person on the right. other line. Uh, yeah. Do you have any thoughts? What do you, you know, if, if they're not <clears throat> um, voicing their opinion without being asked, uh, if they're an introvert, is that, is that an element of um, not having the, uh, not feeling welcomed to, to voice their opinion, or is that more about them just being deliberate and they're listening? And when they yeah, have I something think, to say yeah. or that they feel can contribute, they will contribute it. Or maybe Ryan, that's a better question. I'm watching Ryan now and he's nodding. <laughs> yeah. So I know that he agreed. He thinks the latter probably, right? So, so yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, right. I, I think it's more the latter of um, this idea of uh, if it's already been stated, we don't yeah. need to add our voice to something. Um, so like, uh, you, we want to add value, obviously, Dan, and mm -hmm. we see those opportunities to do so, we will. Uh, but an introvert's natural um, inclination uh, is probably not to, uh, you know, speak up just to hear our voice or to get our voice into the conversation. It, we, we're looking for things that we can add to the conversation. Right. And we, and we do process a bit, to your point about listening. Uh, so many times as we're listening, a point might come in our mind and then someone says it. And then we don't need to, I guess at that point, you're, you're not feeling compelled to add to um, the discussion because someone else has already covered it. Right. Actually. You should be you should be a manager's um, fa favorite student, right? Because you're you're minimizing the time spent in meetings because you're <laughs> you're trying not to repeat something someone else said, right? But 
But here's the problem, though. Okay. Let, let's bring on the flip side of that, right, yep. Ryan? Yep, yep. Because That's if right. you go to multiple meetings and you are being deliberate and you're thinking it through and maybe you, you know, just don't say anything, it's without others, particularly the extroverts, and other introverts possibly too, um, they don't think that you, that you become not a presence in that conversation mm-hmm. unless you do a couple things that I have seen introverted leaders do it very effectively, and I'm sure Ryan does that as well, okay. is to follow up with an email to everybody or have a one-on-one. Both of those writing and also one-on-one focused conversations are real strengths, uh, Dan, of introverts. So, so, so they, you, they leverage that even if they don't speak in the meeting. That's good to know. Okay, well, let, let's yeah. talk about Ryan. Let's talk about um, given the challenges uh, th- that Jennifer has shared that that are a broader spectrum across business in general. What are some of the changes around eighty four fifty one that have come from Itopia in your efforts within the company? Yeah, Dan, I, I think the biggest one, um, you know, knowing that we're we're still early on, as as Jennifer mentioned, movements. Mm-hmm a little bit of time, but, uh, early on, I I would say the biggest thing is just awareness. It's having conversations like these, uh, Mm -hmm. because as introverts, you know, right or wrong, we're not going out and probably talking a lot about these things. Um, it's just not in our nature. So just creating the awareness around, um, what's happening in an introvert's mind when someone says something, what does that mean for an introvert? Mm -hmm. Allowing not just introverts, but extroverts engage in a conversation around like, oh, I didn't realize that made you felt that way, Ryan, is is really game changing um, to get people to understand what's happening so that we can remove some of those stereotypes, some of those biases. So if you don't hear me talking in a meeting, it's not because I'm not thinking about it. Mm-hmm. It's not because I'm distracted. Mm-hmm. You know, um, I'm not giving you eye contact. That's probably a sign that I'm processing, not necessarily disengaging. Um, But, you know, if we don't talk about those things, the assumption might be you people just make assumptions and fill in the voids where there's not discussion. So awareness is a big thing. We, the second thing we've done is this idea of flip the script, which is a little bit of awareness and it's in Jennifer's upcoming book. Yeah, we I'll, we'll put a little plug in for 8451 okay, right. as, a, as a case study in the back here with that, Ryan. Right. That's, That's in right. there. Right. Um, so it is in there. Okay. It good. is in there. And people are asking about it already. So it's very exciting. Right. There we go. Yeah. We're famous. 84 yeah, we're famous. You're famous. That's right. Um, <laughs> but what it, what it does is, is just reframe some language and flip the script on the wordings of things um, in terms of how a manager might um, interact with an introvert and what it feels like when you hear kind of feedback that says, Hey, Ryan, you're too quiet. And what does that mean? And how does an introvert interpret that? Which there's good intention behind that statement, mm-hmm. but an introvert that might make you feel worse and actually do the opposite of shutting down because that's not, we know we're quiet. Like we've been given that feedback right. a long time. So we, we know that what we need is like some real discussion around how we, how we get around it. And so flipping the script is, is really a great example of how you can have those conversations in a meaningful way. What, what, can you explain, uh, go a little deeper on flipping the script. What's an example of how 8451 is flipping the script? Can you just give me a, a one, yeah. one you know, actual example of, of what you did or what you're in the process of doing? Yep. So that, that document <clears throat> being shared in multiple, uh, multiple mechanisms. So <laughs> with our, um, people led or people management um, training series where we're, we're highlighting flipping the script um, so that managers understand, you know, the right language to use, uh, how people feel about those languages and really start those journeys um, hmm. with that. So we're hoping uh, through that by impacting some of the manager discussions um, that happen, we can actually impact multiple multiple relationships through that. So picture, you know, while we're working on how it, you know, an introvert introverts can add even more value to the organization than they currently do. Right. If we can reach someone who manages 40 some people and that changes their um, approach to their team, that could unlock. And to Jennifer's point, let's say half of the group is introverts. That could unlock an immense amount of value really quickly. Uh, just by understanding 
how an introvert might interpret language as an example or feedback and how to maybe reposition it, reframe it, and really have an ongoing dialogue um, around the outcome. Like, I, I think we want to focus on the outcome, not to say that the style isn't important, but there's multiple ways that uh, you can leverage different style to get to the outcome. Some being extroverted, some being introverted. And I think we got to get to the point where we, we know which one's which. Introverts can flex to extroversions just like extroverts can flex into their introverted selves. Um, <clears throat> understanding when to use which one, when, and how is really the key, one of the keys to success because we're all going to have to stretch ourselves outside right. of normal kind of natural state, if you will. Um, that's just some of the ways that it's being implemented. Well, so speaking of stretching yourselves or stretching ourselves and, and, and outcomes, uh, Jennifer, let's go to you, especially given that we're talking primarily about data scientists here. What research or data exists that informs yeah. us how, how companies can benefit from the quiet strengths of introverts? Well, data science, I work a lot, Dan, with, with folks who work with numbers and work mm -hmm. with, um, don't, don't, people interactions aren't the major part of their day, although more and more it, it's true for data scientists. So well, number one, having that f ability to focus and, and also go deep. And I think um, that's such a strength, certainly if you're doing data analytics to do that yeah. and deep with projects. But also I think the thing we forget about is that relationships, the kind that that Ryan was just referring to a leader and let's say somebody on his team having the conversation about how do you like to get information and, you know, tell me more about your personal style, what works for you and really getting down to some of the um, technicalities of will about how we can work together. Well, that takes going deep too. It also mm -hmm. takes courage and it takes realizing that, um, you know, that we have more than just the numbers to look at. And so I think right. those strengths that, that introverts have, um, it really, I think, speak very well. The people I've seen very successful in data analytics who've mm -hmm. also, like Ryan, um, developed and enhanced their people side have, have built on those introvert strengths that they have, like the listening, Dan, that's really yeah. important. Gauge listening. I mentioned the focus one-on-one -on -one conversations. And the third one I'll, I'll mention that we don't often talk about is writing expressing themselves through writing. So if you get sort of a more comprehensive, well thought out position paper or an email, you know, an introvert's probably behind that. And so gotcha. for data analytics, it's not just about the numbers, right? It's making the case. And this isn't just internally, this is also externally with, you know, the customers right. that you have out there, which you have a lot of them. Interesting. Well, so this is for both you, Jennifer and Ryan. Are there any specific advantages and disadvantages of introversion in data science or any other career path for that matter? Ryan, you want to uh, take that one? Yeah, I, I would say um, to Jennifer's point, there's definitely some advantages. There's definitely some disadvantages. I, I think that that occurs in any role, honestly. Mm -hmm. um, I think what you might find is that there'll be a gravity or a pull to certain maybe jobs from an introvert standpoint, just like there would be an extrovert. Um, but you're gonna have to pull from your toolbox, if you will, you know, introverted at times skills, extroverted at times skills. Mm -hmm. That's regardless of whether you're an introvert, extrovert, et cetera. Um, I think what introverts sort of struggle with or, or what we're really trying to look for is making sure that the, if you will, the starting line we're all on the same starting line. And some of that's what we talked about, whether it's this conscious or unconscious bias towards um, maybe the way things should look um, in terms of how you present yourself or, or something like right. that, or how you speak up in a meeting uh, versus the outcomes and, and, and what, what's really driving things forward. Um, Sometimes I'll, mention, I'll add something to that. Um, sometimes that I've seen Ryan and, and Dan is sometimes because introverts don't speak up, they tend to get a lot on their plate. Yep. And mm -hmm. so, you know, it, it's a matter of getting used to being able to, to say, no, this is, I've got my bandwidth is full right now. Right, you know, and I right. find sometimes the extroverts because they're expressing a lot, they're telling you what's happening. So a manager said to me recently, he said, you know, I don't have the time to go investigate what's on my some person's plate. So yeah. if they don't tell me, 
then I'm going to ju- they're going to get overloaded. So I don't know if you've seen that right. Um, people get you know exhausted and overwhelmed. And the problem with that for introverts, like we said earlier, they need quiet time and space. So if there's no time during the day, I think we all can get around that. And everybody's sure. kind of complaining now and being at home that we're kind of working all the time, right? So uh, myself included. So I think we need, just need to watch that and be able to have those conversations. And if you have a good rapport with your manager mm-hmm. and with your teammates, it's not just your manager, then you can speak up. But if you're too quiet and you're not you know, expressing yourself, Ryan, I don't know if you've seen yeah. that happen with, on the introverted side of the equation that people do get, um, no, yeah, get overwhelmed. I think yeah. you're right, Jennifer. And you hit on the key. I think the key is is having that level of comfort. Yeah. Or that sense of belonging where you do feel um where you can speak up. Um mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. In a way that works mm-hmm. for you. Um that's authentic to yourself. Um yeah. well, it, and it's really the critical piece. If 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 we can get to that, I, I, I think you know, no one's gonna have real big problems. I mean, sure, you're gonna have ways of working and things like that, but it'll be all um, out on the table and not um, kind of these unconscious biases or assumptions or 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 things that happen when you when honestly when introverts don't speak up and honestly when extroverts aren't uh, willing to explore things with an introvert. So it, it's yeah. on both sides to uh, really drive that conversation. Um, but you need both. So you need the willingness, and the extrovert needs to create the environment where that. You know, if, if an introvert does speak up, it's rewarded and, you know, uh, mm-hmm. going instead of maybe, um, you know, shutting it down, things like that, well, that'll make the introvert shut down even further. So, so that, that brings us to another question. Uh, we're kind of jumping, jumping ahead here a little bit, but, um, and, and I've got a couple more that, that, I, that we had not prepared. We're uh, stimulating uh, you here. We're uh, stimulating uh, your uh, brain uh, here, Dan. Uh, uh, it's, it takes a lot for me. I mean, it's a Monday too. So uh, that's true. Well, this that's is for both true. Of you. So, so this goes, uh, Ryan's comment goes to this question. What can extroverts do to become more aware of these challenges for introverts and act as allies for introverts at work? That's a great question. I think that, uh, first of all, extroverts, and I'm seeing more of this have to be willing mm. to, uh, consider this as important to take the time to look at Mm -hmm. Uh, just because we live in an extroverted world, extroverted workplace type a, you know, so for extroverts, it's been, this has been our comfort level, but if we, we must stop and and consider the loss and really this is essential that we do this. And I'm seeing Mm -hmm. more of this happen. And I'll tell you, Dan, it's kind of interesting. I say, well, what brings extroverts to my workshops or, you know, because a lot of times it isn't, they're not willing to necessarily come right to the programs that I offer. And usually, you know what it is? It's somebody in their family, right? And I've talked about like their son, they can't connect with their husband is still driving Mm -hmm. them crazy because they're opposite. I wrote a book called the genius of opposites. And really it's, one of the major steps that extroverts can taste is accept that you're not going to change that person into a, into an extrovert. I mean that once you do that, you're in for a lot less stress. You know, I'm still learning after many years of marriage to an introvert. I, yeah, I, and, I you know, I sometimes well. he'll hold the book up and say, "Read the book, Dan." <laughs> right, right. <laughs> but, uh, but I think that that is very, very key. I'm glad you asked that question because it's really important that um, that extroverts stop. And I, I'll throw one more because I'm an extrovert. I'll throw in one more, and that is to listen. And yeah. when we hear a pause, we think you're done talking. Mm. So we need to stop filling the silence and let there be some quiet. I, I can certainly say that as as probably an extrovert, I, I've had to work hard over over the years to be a better listener, you know, and let mm-hmm. people finish their thoughts. And now it bothers me when I hear um, or or see others talk over people when that other person is trying to tell a story. And maybe maybe they they just are more deliberate about telling that story. And and for an extrovert, that's hard to listen for that long, I think, right? To, to, they want to, they want to, especially when, when they hear something they can, um, they can line with, you know, um, they want to, they want to kind of glob on and share their experience. And it's, it's hard for them to just not do that until that person's finished sharing theirs, you know? I don't know. That's my own personal observation. No, I, you're, you're right. And I, what I try to uh, uh, kind of clarify to my introverted colleagues and, and clients is that if you observe extroverts talking together, that's how they talk to each other mm-hmm. is they interrupt each other and they don't, they see that as a way to build on a conversation. Interesting. So, okay. yeah. So, it, but introverts, 
obviously it's not the way you want to flex to work with introverts. Yeah. So it's, a, it's kind of a different part of our brain that we need to use. So, so I, I'm curious, um, we're, we are recording this special edition, um, early to mid June. Um, and this is a time when many businesses are, um, either returning to work or putting their plans together for returning to work. Um, Jennifer, well, really either one of you, Jennifer or Ryan, do you think, how, how do you think introverts are feeling about, they've just spent the last eight plus weeks mm -hmm. working remotely, uh, communicating virtually as we're doing now. How do you think an, the typical introvert is, is feeling um, about the prospect of either going back to work or already being back at work? I'm going to throw it to Ryan because we yeah. we've had conversations <laughs> about sure this, have. right? <laughs> Yeah, I, th I think it's one of two things, Dan. Like, honestly, there's um, some people have found that working from home has created that space that they desired, um, that the office, for whatever reason, couldn't create for them. So mm -hmm. I think there's a lot of anxiety or, or angst about returning to work. For others, um, you know, it's evolved into, call it eight hours a day on a video chat. Um, yeah where that, that, that mechanism is actually, I don't know if we have anything like scientific, but I can tell you from my experience is more draining than being in meetings all day at the office with people. So even though Jennifer makes the right point that there's a, um, there's an energy from being within yourself. I do think there's a little bit, you still get a little bit of energy from social interactions in small hmm. ways and small doses and things like that, that, that a video chat, um, just doesn't allow you to, to do. So like, yeah. me, there might be a little small dynamics going on that gives me energy. Um, but with a video chat, it, it's kind of tough to have those little connections um, that I personally love. Um, and I think a lot of introverts love too. you know, your partner in crime, if you will, someone you really connect with. Um, it, when you're in a meeting with them and seeing them react and how you play off each other, all those times was yeah. different online. Um, right. I think it's, it could go both ways, Dan. I, I think it's really about to Jennifer's point, like how much of this deep thought, uh, inwardly focused, um, time has been created because of work from home or mm -hmm. taken away from you. Um, yeah. That, and one thing we saw, we did a program with um, Itopia sponsor, Dan, uh, about, about a month ago. Well, no, it was earlier than that, right? When yeah, pretty soon right after now. we shut down. Yeah. And what was cool, Ryan, is I noticed on the, in the chat, there were some people kind of ribbing each other and giving sort of the hard time. They kind of missed that in the office yeah. probably, or, or even remotely. Um, when, when I did the research uh, before the, the virus hit, you know, I, and I don't think it's that different now. I looked, I, I talked to design firms and I said, how do we really serve introverts at work in terms of the workplace office. And um, they said they're basically, Dan, Dan and Ryan, three different areas, collaboration, socialization, and focus. And what I encourage leaders to do now, now that we've had this experience of of going virtual. And one of the areas we've seen is that we can do some more virtually than we thought, maybe yeah. not everything. Right. But how do we solve the, we address those three areas, collaboration, socialization, and focus with introverts in mind, but involve introverts like groups like Itopia and mm -hmm. other introverts in, in the planning process. Cause now we know we've kind of tried on some different uh, ways of doing it and we're going to have to adjust you know, to having more space and all the other things right, that are going to happen right. when you guys go back to your offices. So, yeah. so Jennifer, uh, to that point, um, what are some of the ways you've documented that introverts use to help themselves perform their job functions when they call for activities outside of their comfort zone, whether that oh, has to do with okay. the return to work policies now or, you know, whatever, you know, what, what are, yeah. Yeah, and, and you can just bullet point them, you know, but, sure, but what are some sure. of those, some of those ways you've documented yeah. And I will say this goes with like the areas of we've talked about leaders really in setting a stage, right, mm -hmm. for everything, for making it comfortable to have these conversations. And we're also talking about organizations as a whole looking at this. But there are individual steps we can each take, whether we're introverts or extroverts. And one of the uh, the models that I like to share with people is this four P's model that I documented in the introverted leader that came not from me, but from the stories and examples that um 
probably at this point, thousands of introverted leaders have shared with me. Right. They do four things. Prepare. These are the four P's that prepare. This is for any kind of leadership scenario. That's mm-hmm. one of their strengths. You know, like Ryan prepared for this call and right. prepares for meetings. Introverts get the, get it together there. Then they're present. They put aside their preparation and they're in the moment because we know mm-hmm. things change in the moment. We want to be there. We want to be where our feet are. So whether it's public speaking, networking, you're fo- there, there and focused. So yeah. that's the second P. Okay. The, the, the third P after uh, prepare and presence is push. And that has to do with stretching. For all of us, stepping out of our comfort zones mm-hmm. uh, is really important. That's how we grow. So okay. in terms of our leadership competencies or anything we're doing at work in any of the areas, uh, we have to keep raising the bar and stretching ourselves and getting the, that leads to the fourth one. And that's gotcha. the practice It's refining your skills and continuing to practice. So if you use that model in whatever leadership scenario you're trying to get better at it, and I do have a quiz on the, my website that's free jenniferconwaller.com, where you can kind of assess, it's a very short quiz, where you want to focus and look mm-hmm. at, you know, put your, your energy. That, that hopefully gave it in bullet points. Great. That, that, <laughs> Good. That's, that's perfect. Uh, Ryan, any, anything to add to that? No, yeah. I, I think those are all the things um, that can help. I think it's um, just adding to that would be doing it in a way that works for you. Not yeah. How yeah. others want you to do preparation or you know be present? How do you how do you tailor that to what works for you? Would just be the ad uh, that I I would add to that. Great. And then final question: This is to both of you, Jennifer and Ryan. What advice would you offer to companies to help them fully unlock and utilize the potential of their introverted employees? Uh, I would say start the conversations. Be intentional. Mm-hmm. You know, make it a priority for your leaders to bring this up under the umbrella of all of the sorts of topics you're talking around, around inclusion, and not just talk about it. Also look at yourself. I think that's really key. Yourself as an individual. And uh, we're talking a lot about bias now. Bias goes in many different areas. And just surfacing those, you're not going to change everything totally overnight. But I find having that awareness as a company uh, can really shift uh, your practices and incredibly change and change the incredible results that you get from doing that. Great. That's right. Ryan, you have a yeah, thought? Yeah, I would just say um, if, if, if you as a company has created an unintentional environment where people don't feel like they can um, speak up or share, mm-hmm. think of the untapped amount of value that is out there uh, for your business. So, you know, how many ideas were out there, but because of the environment or the situation or people's sense of belonging to the organization or to their teams weren't, weren't brought up, weren't dialogued against, um, you know, what, what a, what a huge opportunity for all these companies, as Jennifer said, and I, to just start the conversation, because if you yeah. start the conversation, you get a couple ideas, it's going to be well worth the time that you invest. Right. I can tell you that because we, we as introverts, are thinking about these things all the time. So it's just a matter of um, how do we create an environment where we can take that inward focus and present it ex- expert, ex- externally, outwardly, um, that can help the organization. And, you know, vice versa, too. How do we take the outward and, you know, maybe process things a little bit inwardly, as mm-hmm. Jennifer talked about just listening. Um, there's so much work that can be done, and I think if you do the work, start the conversations, be honest with each other, you'll, you'll recognize the value pretty quickly. Um, and that happens to Jennifer's point, not just at work, but at home. Uh, when right. you step away from the work, the relationships that you can um, mend, if you will, if, it, you know, if something's called fragments or start or et cetera, is, it, it really is unlimited in what it can do. And, and <clears throat> to the point of, of how your insights that from each of you can help others uh, uh, real quickly before we jump to the lightning round. Uh, Jennifer, tell us where people can learn more about um, you and your book. Sure. My, my website uh, is Jennifer Conweiler. That's K-A-H-N-W-E-I-L-E-R, Jennifer with two N's, dot com. And it's full of resources and my books and would love people to uh, consider taking the quizzes. Would love to, to hear what, get more data on that, uh, that side of the house. So thank Great. you for asking. You're welcome. And Ryan, where can people um, 
whether they're with 8451 or outside of the company, um, I'm not sure if, if it's external facing or not, but where can people learn more about Itopia? Yeah, uh, I would say uh, if anyone wants to reach out to me, feel free. I'm on LinkedIn. Uh, we can start those conversations about you know what happened with Itopia. Um, clearly, we are working on some ways to get this outward of 8451 outside mm -hmm. of uh, Kroger. Um, an example is Jennifer's new book where we are sharing with um, Jennifer and then thus leveraging her ability to share with <laughs> others um, some ideas around Itopia um, that we can do. So we'll, we're going to continue to try to do this unique balance, I guess, Dan, of like, we've got a lot of work to do at 8451. We've come a long way. 8451 is very supportive, great space. We've got a lot of work to do still, um, but we don't. We also want to make sure that others can maybe learn from our example. So just reach out. You know, we'll try to figure out a way to help. We'll share with you what we've been doing, because um, the goal, as I stated before, was really about just helping one more person. So if we can help one more person, we're kind of all in. Fantastic. No, and, no, no, has impact beyond that person. Very exciting what, what's going on. I just want to say I'm, I'm so wowed by what 8451 is doing as, as a consultant who scoured companies to try to find examples of pockets of, inclu of introvert inclusion. Uh, you didn't pay me to say that either, right? <laughs> Neither of you. Not that I'm aware of, nope. But uh, you're helping so many people, Ryan. So I'm so glad that we, uh, we connected and it's a, it's a journey going, going forward. Right. Well, and, and we appreciate both, appreciate both your efforts. Uh, and uh, uh, it's, you know, 8451 tries to be on the leading edge of these sorts of initiatives. Um, and so, Ryan, we appreciate your leadership in that, in that regard. And now, uh, perhaps, and, and this, uh, it occurs to me, this could be an exercise to see who does better, not that we're grading, uh, <laughs> uh -oh. the extrovert uh -oh. or the introvert on the uh, 8451 lightning round, where we ask you a series of eight random questions for 51 seconds. Jennifer and Ryan, are you ready? Yes. Ready. All right. I'm, <laughs> start, I'm, I'm starting with stopwatch. Here we go. Jennifer, if you could have one book, but not yours, while stranded on a desert island, what would it be? <laughs> uh, Peace is Every Step by Thich Nhat Hanh. Fantastic. Ryan, if you had to teach one subject in school, what would it be? Uh, history. Great. Jennifer, what is your favorite ice cream? Any flavor by graders. Ryan, what is the last movie you watched? Uh, it is, uh, God, I always mess up the title. Outward or Onward, the Pixar film? Onward, okay. okay. Yep. Jennifer, what one word describes happiness to you? Health. Ryan, where would you choose to retire? Uh, Tahiti. Jennifer, what makes you <laughs> smile? My granddaughter is Ava and Millie. Great answer. And Ryan, what is one item you could not live without? Uh, books. Good Guys, one. we... I, I, we make I, it? Do we make it? 51.91. So I don't know how that works. We're still within the 50... Well, maybe that's the 52nd uh, uh, second. I'm not sure. But I'm going to say we did really well considering three of us, uh, two of you trying to answer those right. questions. Uh, and I would say uh, it, it's only proof that extroverts and introverts can work well together. <laughs> right? So yes, yes. <laughs> well, listen, I, I want to thank both of you, Jennifer Conweiler and Ryan Showalter, for being our guest today. I'm your host, Dan O'Keefe. We've learned a lot today, and I, I'm, I'm excited to continue to learn more. But for now, we will see you next time on The Upload. Well, that does it for this special edition of The Upload by 8451. We hope you've enjoyed this episode and have a better understanding of what makes us who we are. Remember to subscribe to our podcast so you don't miss out on any of our updates or insights. Until next time, stay curious.